Hello folks, welcome to Leg CIS. In today's video, we'll be looking into the second part of Bahamani Empire that is about your administration. Okay, now let's get into the video. Now, we'll see how the administration, see the political part is already done. We'll see how the administration was divided. See, the administration of Bahamani, okay, can be divided in two parts. Okay, one is during Muhammad Gawan okay another is post Muhammad Gawan now you all might be pretty much sure by now who is Muhammad Gawan if you don't know please look into the first part of the video that will be linked in the description okay now see your Deccan Sultanate or Bahamani Empire was running on the line similar to the Delhi Sultanate Okay, which meant what Sultan, okay, occupied the central authority. He had both executive, judiciary, okay, almost all the important aspects was under him and he governed those with the help of ministers, okay. Now, the province or the area of their kingdom, right, during the period of Gavan, okay, was divided into tariffs. Okay, now each taraf was looked, okay, each taraf nothing but a province, right? Each taraf was looked after by a tarafdar or a subedar. Okay, now it doesn't mean that before Gavan, okay, before Mohammed Gavan, this thing was not there. Tarafs were existing, there were four tarafs here Dalatabad, Bidar, Bearer, Gulbarga, right? During the period of Muhammad Gavan, he further, okay, divided those provinces into eight, okay, into eight in number or eight tariffs basically and to look after that taraf was a tarafdar or a subedar, right. Now, why did he do that? First thing was, see, at that point of time in the Deccan Sultan, the nobility was increasing, the importance of nobility had increased a lot. With the increasing nobility, all right, there was also in squabbles, in fighting, trying to weaken the central authority, right, their influence was spreading, right, alongside was corruption, okay, the influence of nobility was spreading, not of the Bahamani empire on its own, the centralization was trying to become more and more decentralized, okay, here decentralized as in not an organic or a hierarchical structure, right, rather people were trying to devour the pieces in however way they can. Right, that is not good for administration. To curb that, okay, Muhammad Gavan came up with, right, division of provinces, okay, and that province will be looked after by a tarafda on top of whom, or this person will be, okay, held over the position over tarafda will be a governor who will be appointed by the central government, or here a Bahamani king, right? This much is clear. Now look at this administrative structure similar to Delhi Sultanate. Yes, Sultan was the head of state. Yes, Akil, Wazir, Bakshi, Kazi, right? They were the ministers. We'll see who were dealing with which position, what were they called. We'll see further ahead. Right? As we spoke about Taraf, Tarafdar, right? The four Tarafs were Dalatabad, Bidar, Bearer, Gulbarga. Alright? Now the administrative structure had good strong military, right? That included soldiers, cavalry, elephants, right? Now look at this one more important thing is salary was in the form of cash or jagir. Now what is a jagir? Jagir is nothing but allotment or, okay, a piece of land given to a person instead of cash. That is, here the salary was in both ways, in form of cash and also in the form of jagir or gifting of land. Alright, now see, look at this thing. The military mechanism. See, in your Vijayanagar empire, we have did already one series, please do have a look at it. Right? In your Vijayanagar series, we have seen that. Right? Important region they were in was below or south of your Tungabhadra region. Contemporary to Vijayanagar, okay, kingdom was your Bahamani kingdom, right? Both are pretty strong, right? Medieval India, two strong zones or two strong central authority power existed in southern India. Means one was Bahamani, one was Vijayanagar. If they have to remain strong, which means they have to have a strong military, 
right the military was also highly strong in bahamani how see we saw here soldiers cavalry elephants yes alongside with this they use something in the form of gunpowder right they used large amount of good branded horses okay and they were used for trade the bull right your the bull was a region okay where the trade of horses used to take place from many places people used to bring their horses from multiple regions vijayanagar empire region masurka region okay persia turkey from there they used to come and they used to sell horses here so horse trade was also pretty much important bahmani empire so one of the thing with trade was with respect to horses right branded horses horsemen right so so your bahmani empire had a good strong military system along with that they just didn't use this or just gunpowder we see multiple other things for example cannons right it is said that right your hasan gangu or the founder of bahmani empire initially what was the capital of your bahmani empire gulbarga right the gulbarga fort pe when he captured right there was huge amount of fortifications made for gulbarga empire meaning cannons were placed on the empire or on the fort bahmani empire if you have to say by bahmani empire we mean centrality right now for example the gulbarga fort was heavily fortified okay here all the cannons were placed right arms fortification was on a heavy duty in gulbarga fort right indicating their capital city was well secured well fortified the same will apply for the entire bahmani empire all right now look at this this means the prime minister finance minister foreign affairs ministers head of judiciary charities head of provinces on top of this the head is sultan okay now the one important for any region to flourish right for any empire to flourish one important thing they have to have is good source of economy and that comes through multiple sources for example your land right economy is generated primarily at that point of time economy was generated through your land right agriculture and one other feature mostly important with this aspects is your trade right during bahmanis okay trade was extremely well established well established as in see for example we spoke in the previous slide about the ball right double wing of port right in that place they brought horses from right persia turkey right all the other regions of the western coast where they used to bring the horses there and then trade used to happen right and also look at this at this period of time we said the contemporaries of bahmanis were vijayanagars yes alongside them the contemporaries were also the entry of europeans this also will come down further and later but as of now know that the zone of trade okay for bahmanis became exclusively important because this region is what flourished okay your bahmani region could flourish because of trade right be it from europeans be it from persia be it from turkey okay or be it within india that is vijayanagar right from mysore kingdom it would be brought to the bull port under the control of bahmanis and then trade used to take place there understanding here now your mohammad gawan okay he scaled the agricultural lands he measured the lands based on the fertility and tax was collected on that and then it was already known that how much income will be coming that is see earlier yes they will mark the land they will tell this much but here with respect to mohammad gawan he made sure now this is the fertile land this much it should be giving the tax so even before tax or income would come into their hands they would have an idea as to how much it would come right which meant what other people cannot the middleman cannot keep taking away which meant the nobles cannot keep taking the economy as they wish right which means what corruption to an extent will be reduced yes that's what he tried to do right scaling of land measurement of land right the streamline the revenue system revenue collection was okay very well versed at this point of time this okay reduced corruptions of the nobles or nobility like how we discussed right we see your russian traveler nikitin discuss about the trade okay happening in the 
ports of Bahmani Empire flourish in the empire. Okay, that is one source we get from your foreign traveler. All right, let's move ahead. Now, during administration and the military more major in the administration, one of the major aspects being your military. We mentioned they used multiple things such as your elephants, gunpowder. Another thing is your siege warfare. Look at this. I want you to observe this thing. The cannons firing these things. So remember in the fortification we spoke about this. All right. Nothing but your usage of gunpowder, large usage of gunpowder. Chemists were bought from Persia. Chemists were bought from Turkey. They were taught, right? The Bahamani soldiers were taught how to utilize gunpowder, right? In the warfare and how to use it, all right? In the warfare, that was one of the strategic advantages the Bahamanis had, all right? We said cavalry, horse, horse trade, pretty much very important and one of the reasons the trade flourished very well. Now, look at the tariffs. Remember, we spoke the four important tariffs and then how, see, you all know by now the capital of Bahamani, okay? First is from Gulbarga, right? Then it moved to Bidar, right? Look at this. Bijapur, Golconda, Bidar, Derar, Ahmednagar, Goa. I want you to observe this. There is a reason. We will come again later. Right? Zone being your Vijayanagar Empire. Right? South of Tungabhadra region. I said observe Goa well and then it says a battle that changed the world. It doesn't say the battle that changed India. Okay, rather it's saying a battle that changed the world. This book is speaking about Bahamani kings. It's speaking about Vijayanagar kings, right? With this respect, fine. We also spoke about Persia, Turkey, okay, all that is fine with respect to trade. What was a battle that happened in or what was the battle that was happening which is somewhere linkable to Bahamanis that we're talking and that is something with respect to the world. Let's see here. Eh? That is the battle of Diu. So remember I said the contemporaries. Okay. The contemporaries of your Bahamanis were Vijayanagar. Right. Along with them one were your Europeans. That is the entry had just begun. Who is the first Europeans to enter India? That is after the discovery of New Sea Route. Your Portuguese. Right? Portuguese had just entered India. Right? At that point of time, I'll tell it to you like a story, you also listen to it like a story, then we will fill in the blanks. Right? So what happened was, look at the small story. Europe, or Asia Minor, or your Turkey, right? India. Africa. You have seen the story as to why Europe had to find new sea route and all. Okay. So Europe, right? Europe finds a new sea route to India via Africa. Right? Now here Portuguese have entered India. The earlier trade route, see this is the new sea route. Right? This is the new sea route. Earlier route was Europeans would go to Asia Minor. I right? will mark this by 1, I will mark this by 2. Europeans would go to Turkey or Asia Minor, that is your Constantinople. From there they would come trade with India. Right? This was the conventional route they followed. Then Ottoman Turks, all those things happened. Finally, they found new sea route. The first to enter was your Portuguese. Your Portuguese have come in. Alright, the Portuguese have come in. But do you think the people who are already making benefit off of this route will be okay with the Portuguese coming now and trying to create the hegemony there? They won't, right? So the Sultan of Turkey, right? Your Genoans, Venetians, they'll all come together, okay, near the battle of Diu, right? 
this is happening somewhere in this region your western coast region in that same region is your bahamanis also right in a combined force when they came in right your bahamanis are also on the port so any war that happens it affects the bahamanis also so now your genoans venetians sultan of turkey and all of them circle the ports of portuguese and defeat the portuguese right one thing was in that defeat okay at that point of time okay the governor was francisco de almeida portuguese governor his son was killed in that battle son was killed now this became more of a political story this became a revenge story of almeida he swore revenge to defeat the forces all the forces involved including your bahamanis okay including your bahamanis which means the wrath of almeida fell on the bowl the area or region in fighting area okay which falls under the bahamanis also this is a region of trade huge flourishing region right almeida crushed the defeating okay almeida crushed the defeat the very next year he defeated all of them collectively that includes your bahamanis or that is your the ball region okay it was said that what was once flourishing so well of the ball region became a curse for that region right this particular war right we have seen that almeida crushed the battles and then that began the entry okay of a european hegemony over india okay Be beginning with the portuguese this okay this battle why is it important is because from this battle onwards okay we see a transition from medieval india to modern india for that reason this particular battle is very important right who is it happening in the time period of contemporary of bahamanis and vijayanagars all right so your medieval india is now beginning to transition into modern india now you have 50 greatest wars in the world okay greatest wars as in for different reason they are great one such reason we can tell for this battle of dio is that this was the transitioning zone from medieval history to modern history right the world at last was changing right the transition had begun once the transition began you cannot stop it and that transition happened during the time of bahamanis or your vijayanagars right now look at this according to historian a sack of the ball gave rise to a curse on the western coast of india that was the wrath of almeida right one might say may the wrath of the franks befall you right this particular battle say like i told you 15 important battles in history not with respect to india entire world pe sixth rank pe is this battle of dio then imagine how much of an impact this is all right now look at this when francisco de almeida hears about the death of his son this is no longer a political strategy it is a personal revenge story he who ate the chick must also eat the roaster or pay for it almeida son almeida understanding now this is your double ka fight right it was said that the seas were storming the rage was so much of almeida that the sea storms were nothing as compared to almeida's rage okay one thing right we are talking about administration i told you something about bahmani how their kingdom was divided right the king was central authority how the provinces were divided then we saw how the trade was flourishing trade zones were there then we went ahead and saw that one of the trade zones was the ball what important event happened we thought one thing was your battle of d right this is something in medieval history this is happening transitioning from medieval history to modern history right this particular zone or this particular administration of bahmani or the zone of bahmani whatever is there we saw the transition from medieval history to modern history let's date a little more back okay in that particular region of okay your bahmanis did something else happen if so which region is that 
See, one thing I said was the contemporaries of Bahamanis are Vijayanagars, right? One constant battle Bahamanis and Vijayanagars, if they had, that was over your Raichur Dome. Okay, constant fight for this, constant fight, right? If Bahamanis and Vijayanagars fought, it will be for the Raichur Dome region and surrounding regions, right? So Raichur Dome was extremely important for both of them. They will keep on fighting. Initially, your Vijayanagars will win. They will have control over this. Then again, your Sultans will come in. They will somehow acquire the place. Eventually, it keeps on happening. Right? This particular region of Bahamanis. Okay? Now, what is it so important? Oh, we said one thing transitioning from medieval to modern. I said let's date a little bit back. That is during your ancient times. Right? I remember about your Mauryan Empire. Remember about King Ashoka, right? His edicts, pillars, right? Known for Buddhism, yeah? I'm assuming you know all those information, right? Now you know all these things, right? In this region of Masiki, okay? Right? Now just as of now, listen to it like a story. In this region, okay? we find a minor edict minor rock edict okay of the time of ashoka okay in which the word devanama priya was used no one knew what it was initially right we have seen you come across the word devanama priya in around like four times four of the pillars or four of the edicts then Devanama Priya means beloved to gods, indicating the name, okay, Devanama Priya means Ashoka, right? We know that, for example, in history, we know that a king called Ashoka existed, right? One such thing is through these edicts that was made stone concrete evident that Ashoka was there. He was called Devanama Priya with these evidence of Masaki. This exists somewhere in your Raichur Dob region. The region of constant conflict between your Sultans and your Vijayanagars. Eventually it goes to Bahamanis. Initially started out with Vijayanagars. It eventually went to Bahamanis. From Bahamanis it went to Mughals. From Mughals it went to Nizam of Hyderabad. From Nizam of Hyderabad it went to your princely states. From princely state it went to your free independent India. Now from free independent India, linguistic states, state reorganization, part of it came to Karnataka, part of it went to Telangana. That is the story of your Raichur Dob. Or the importance of Bahamani period over ancient history, medieval history, modern history and contemporary times. This is how you have to look at things. All four are linked. Understanding? The initial capital being Gulbarga Fort, right? Here, this is where the cannons would be placed, right? The entrance of your Gulbarga Fort, look at this. The cannons mounted on Gulbarga Fort indicating heavily fortified, right? Fortification was one of the key elements associated with your Bahamani Empire. Bidar becomes your new capital city. Okay, one thing I want you to observe is this Raichur Dob region. See, one important aspect is the reason it is called Dob. Okay, it is drained or sediments are deposited from both Krishna and Tungabhadra. Look at this. This is your just follow the marking all right look at this right then comes your Krishna river look at this region 
right making it an ideal form okay of existence survival beginning of times okay right like we said ancient medieval modern contemporary all four have the links so we spoken about raichur we spoke about how your ashokan edicts are there right we, uh, that is some relating to your ancient history we spoke about how medieval history okay was happening with vijayanagar bahamani then we spoke about modern history with the entry of europeans right western hegemony over india all those things now we'll date a little more back to prehistoric times right we see settlements in the raichur dob dating back to neolithic age right we see settlements in raichur dob dating back to neolithic age iron age right what kind of settlement was there here agricultural sedentary agricultural settlements can be seen rich flora and fauna can be seen in this region the region that was so fought by your bahamanis vijayanagar which they tried to control and get it into their influence okay that is the importance of the zone or basically this comprised either kingdom of vijayanagar or bahamani right you cannot have a discussion about bahamani or vijayanagar without mentioning each other and similar way is your raichur do understanding look at this the dob all right here i want you to observe the trifecta okay these three things all right together put whatever we spoke about prehistoric ancient medieval modern contemporary all five things we can witness in this trifecta that is this trifecta plays crucial importance okay in each stage look at this tallikota masuki raichur let's just have a brief look on the things we discussed it's very fertile obviously the sediments of both your krishna and tungabhadra river right now we said part of raichur dob right belongs to karnataka and to telangana raichur district and kopal district of karnataka Gadwal district actually alongside four other more districts are there of Telangana. One was formed as a new district. Okay, if you know which one is that, please do comment on the comment section. All right. It was also inhabited since the prehistoric times. When was it? Neolithic, Iron Age. Okay. The edict of Emperor Masiki, nothing but your minor rock edict. Okay, where it is specified as. Deva Nama Priya or beloved to the gods. Okay, basically Ashoka was referred to as Deva Nama Priya, which meant beloved of the gods. Right. Firstly, the Rajyoga was with Vijayanagar. Then it went to your sultans, Bahmani sultans. Then from them it went to the Mughals. From Mughals it came to Nizam of Hyderabad. Then from Nizam it went to the Europeans. From Europeans, what do you think it will come to? British India. Right. Then now. princely state from princely state it goes to free india and with the formation of linguistic state it is modern day karnataka and telangana okay remained under hyderabad state until 1948 okay now we spoke so much about raichur dob how you know krishna river is there tungabhadra river is there water affluent it should be but raichur dob is a region which is having scanty waterfall scanty rainfall scanty water in the past few years okay which is aggravating since beginning it is having a but now it is aggravating see what is this national rural drinking water program itself is not being able to be implemented in these regions why because that much of scanty rainfalls see during the period of nizam of hyderabad okay so what happened was an el nino had hit the region so at that point of time there was acute scarcity of water so in nizam okay roped in a british okay and they constructed large number of wells 
okay so much so wells okay that they thought this water will be a so this wells will be a source of water conservation but the walls were now okay even today they remain just dry there are multiple n number of wells okay the scarcity of water in a raichur region now one interesting factor right one thing about raichur dob so much so we've discussed in detail all right raichur dob is important for that raichur dob is important for this agriculture settlements were there the janagar was wanting bahmani was wanting with a whole and all was wanting what for one reason presence of your hatti gold mines okay hatti gold mines are present in your raichur dob region so when we say that place is naturally rich okay it is one of the reasons is also this there is one historian who claims that just for 40000 gold coins they lost 4 million lives the battle for raichur was so up so now that ends your bahmani empire's administration okay if you do like our videos subscribe to our channel okay leave a like comment on it and then pass it along with your friends okay thank you